Julian Armella from Columbus uh, High School down in Miami, Florida. What's going on, man? What's up, Coach? How's everything going? Man, everything is good. Everything is good, man. We finally got it working. Somebody was trying to stop us from working, but, you know, we can't be stopped, man. No, we can't. Yeah, so so um, so for those that don't know, man, I, I've been working with Julian since uh, – since he was in eighth grade, uh, he just reminded me, you know, um, he he's he's graduating in 2022. Man, he he reminded me that man, it made me feel old. Um, but man, this kid, this kid is something special. Uh, he will continue to work hard and continue to 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 do the things that he needs to do to take his game to another level, man. And, and I know that he will. Man, kind of tell everyone a little bit about yourself, man. Um, I mean, I played for St. Thomas the first two years of my high school career. I learned a lot there. I got um, developed mentally and physically. And then um, the distance was a little bit too far, and I had personal reasons. So I decided to go to Columbus, and now I'm starting left tackle for Columbus. Um, it's a great program. I love it there. I bond with the brothers. It's, it's just the same thing like St. Thomas. It's a really big brotherhood, and I think we're a little bit closer over there. So, yeah, it's a really good environment. And for those that don't know, man, Columbus is is uh, one of the, one of the most prestige and a powerhouse down here in South Florida. You know, you have you have uh, you have St. Thomas, you have uh, Miami Central, you have Northwestern, and you know sometimes you know Columbus tends to to get left out. And I don't understand why, because that that is definitely uh, one of the most power, uh, one of the most um, top notch programs down here in South Florida. Uh, these guys just won states this past year, um, but always been a contender every single year. And uh, you know they're going to continue to do to do uh, numbers, and you know adding Julian is is only uh, is only going to continue to help them uh, help them grow. So. My next question, man, to kind of start out, you know, with a little a little fun question. What about the O-line position do you love the most? Um, I think the main thing I love about the O-line and the value that it holds is that not everybody can do it. And um it's just a it's a dog position. Like in the trenches, mm -hmm. it's it's not like wide receiver or quarterback or stuff like that. Like you get to move people from point A to point B without them wanting to be moved against their will. And I mm -hmm. personally enjoy that and stuff. And I just, I love to get down in the trenches and no matter what, just dominate and bully people in there. There we go. And um, that I love, I love what you said, man. You get to move a guy against his will from point A to point B. Um, you know, playing off the line isn't a glamorous position. Uh, it's not a position that always get recognized unless you hold in or or some type of penalty. Um, it's not like the skill position. It's not even like a uh, defensive line position. You know, you get your name called at defensive line with your sacks and tackles and things like that. This is the one position where you really don't get a whole lot of recognition. You just have to go out there for the love of the uh, for the love of the game, for the love of your teammates, and for the love of the position. Um. So kind of moving forward. So earlier you said you went from St. Thomas to, to Columbus, right? Um, and we talked about earlier how Columbus is a is also a powerhouse. And um, how was that transition moving from St. Thomas to Columbus? I think it was a really good transition because of the fact that St. Thomas prepared me for, for everything that I've, I've faced so far at Columbus. I mean, all props and homage to St. Thomas, like I'm – I'm glad I'm wet there, stuff like that. Like, that truly prepared me throughout the whole two years of just the winning program and not losing to everybody. So it kind of developed me as a player, and it got my character together. And now just the move has been nothing but success. Uh, we beat uh, Booker T. Washington last week. That was a pretty big game with 2-0 right the now. powerhouse. Yeah, I think uh, the main thing is we're just starting to click. Like, we haven't played football in so long, and I haven't even played with these guys, but now the chemistry is going and everything's just rolling. There we go. There we go, man. It's, it's funny because that is true, man. You can see with a lot of teams, man, like, you know, you're not you're, – you're playing about four or five games this year, and 
to be honest, for most teams around that fourth game, that's when things are starting to kind of click. So um, this year you see that you have to kind of try to speed things up a little bit more quicker than you would normally uh, do in the regular season. Um, so you're at Columbus. What does Julian Armella bring to Saint uh bring to Columbus? Like what 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 do you bring as far as your attitude, as far as your your will, as far as the O line position? What do you bring to to, to Columbus? What do you add? To I Columbus? think I bring a, a certain level of dominance and um, leadership. I think that it's just competition. Like ever since the first day, I've been getting added with all these D linemen and making all the linebackers better. Talking to the D linemen after the play and stepping up to the plate where um, vocal leadership needs to be heard and made. Because right. I know that, like, I'll give you an example. Booker T game, they came out, um, they were fired up. We sounded mm -hmm. dead on the sideline. And I had to do what I had to do to get the sideline pumping. I had to scream and yell. And, and that's something that I think I've brought. And that's been a really good addition this year to the Columbus team. Yeah, that's big, man, because you've always been a vocal guy. Uh, when you say something, you know, people listen. Uh, you do have a strong voice, so you know I definitely can understand where you came from on that. And then uh, you know when you do, when your teammates is, you know, when your teammates are down, you are the type of guy that you know kind of get them guys going, get them fired up. Especially like we said earlier, versus Booker T, which is another powerhouse team down here in South Florida. So I definitely understand that. Um, so moving forward, you're obviously one of the top offensive linemen in your class, right? Um, what separates you from all the other guys that's behind you? Like, what makes you a number? What makes you number? I think the main thing that makes me the number one offensive tackle in my class is just the the dominance that I bring on the football field. Like, no matter what, I'm always trying to put a guy on the ground and move him back 20 yards and drive him and hit linebackers. So it's just the type of energy and stuff that I bring to the field. It's like no other. I have a dog mentality. And you've seen it for two years. I just, mm -hmm. I'm a physical player, and I love to just get down and dirty. There we go. There we go. And it, and it's true, man. I've seen it two years straight, man. And, you know, you, you kind of saw it, to be honest, man, from from eighth grade when I first had that, that camp. And, yeah. And uh, had, uh, you know, had guys out there, man. And, you know, you saw it from there. And, you know, just – being the eighth grader going against high school guys, you know, that, that right there was special. So, you know, you, you, you already saw what was the future, right? you know, so, you know, that, that's definitely big. Um, so as far as recruiting, right. Um, do you have, do you have like your top five, top 10? I got my already? top 10 out right now, but I'm still keeping my recruitment a thousand percent open. Okay. Okay. I see, uh, um, Ohio State. It looks like a Ohio State. Was that Stanford? It's Stanford back behind. Yeah. And then wait, okay. see if I can flip the camera. Um, so yeah, this is how my room has been decorated. You just got like all the letters and stuff like that. I got a whole bin of them, and like yeah, I got a bunch of these. So okay, so so you have all your offers on the wall, or is that just what? Your it's just school. it's like letters and mail that they send me. Like they send me this and says our mail on it and stuff like that. Okay. I'll, just, I'll put it up on my room to make it look nice, I guess. <laughs> okay. That's but now, that's now I don't I don't got no more space, coach. I mean, if you want, I can show you the bin. It's like solid three pounds of mail, like this big. Man, I be, hey, I believe you. I yeah. believe you. I believe you, man. And it's and it's crazy because, man, like you know, just seeing the growth. Is is definitely amazing, and uh, I know you're gonna continue to grow. So, when it when it's time to pick that school for you, right? When it's time to make that decision, what are, what is what are gonna be some key factors for you in making that decision? Like, what, what what are you gonna be looking for in that school? I think the main thing I'll probably look for is an environment that um I know when I take my visit is just gonna it's gonna hit me in the face like yeah this is gonna be my home. I'm trying to go to a program that the coaching staff produces um, great offensive linemen and, and teaches them the great technique and stuff like that. A winning program would always be nice, but I'd also love to develop one and help start a new chain of one. But I think it's just all going to depend on my visit and how 
when I take the visit and hang around with the coaches and guys, I think that'll really set the the X factor on where I go. Okay. Yeah, that's big, man. I know uh when I was when I was uh in school, I took all five of my visits. So I definitely encourage um young guys to take all five. You know, you're gonna have and I'm I'm gonna tell you now, you might I don't think you're gonna have that problem, but you're gonna have coaches that say you know, if you take this visit, then we're not going to uh, give you that offer or we're not going to, you know, follow through with that offer. But honestly, take those visits. You know, that's the, the one time in your life where you get just get to enjoy things and just have everything paid for. And, and you know, it's fun. You know, it's fun. And you you deserve it. You know, you work hard enough to, to get these offers you might as well enjoy the fruit of your labor. You know, right. that's my that's my advice for everyone. Okay. So now kind of moving forward a little bit, right? I want I want to add I want to ask this fun question right here. I think I already have I think I know one that you're going to say. Actually, I'm I guarantee I know one of the linemen you're going to say. Okay? So Right now, you have to give me your top five offensive linemen. Oh, okay. Um, and I it could be it could be college, it could be pro. Doesn't matter. Right. Um, I think top five. I think the one you probably know is Anthony Anthony I Munoz. Know. Yeah. Anthony Munoz. Uh, Tristan Wafers. I think he's out of Iowa. That, that's okay. Name. That's another big one. I think Joe Thomas has always been one of those guys that, like, he's just a baller off and on the field. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think of two other ones that I look up to. Any position, position, too. It don't have to just be tackle. I mean, ever since, like, I went from guard to tackle, I've just been looking at nothing but tackle. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking at what you call Damn, he has his own podcast. I just forgot his name. Uh. Uh, are you talking about Taylor Lewan? Yeah, what? Taylor Lewan. Yeah, he he's Taylor one. Lewan. I'm always enjoying That's watching his highlights. Yeah, I'm always watching like his highlights and stuff like that. And That's those are good. those are probably the top guys that I look at. Yeah, those that those are. That's uh that's a good group right there. You kind of you kind of um. Yeah, yeah. All those guys are, are pretty good. I like them. I like them. Um. I would definitely add Trent Williams um, for for me. Oh, yeah, yeah, Trent for Williams. me, definitely. yeah, for me, I would add Trent Williams. Um, I would have to go with uh, when he's healthy. I would have to go with uh, man uh, from the Dallas Cowboys to tackle uh, uh, Travis Frederick. Travis, yeah. no, 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 the center. The center, uh, Travis Frederick, um, Tyrone Smith, also from the Dallas Cowboys when he's, he's healthy. He's a dog. Yeah, Tyrone Smith when he's healthy. He's definitely um, <laughs> one of the top guys when he's healthy. Yeah. Uh, all right. So now, give me a fun fact about Julian Armella. Something, something that no one, that no one would expect. You know, just give me a fun fact about yourself. Um, let's see. A fun fact about myself. I'll probably have to say, um, as weird as it may sound, I mean, I don't know. I heard a lot of big linemen like to go fishing and stuff like that. But, mm -hmm. I mean, fishing sometimes is fun, but at the same time, sometimes it's boring. Um, I think when, like, you do, like, catch a fish and stuff like that, that's probably something that's enjoyable in the moment. But I enjoy catching fish, but not waiting around all day to catch a fish. That makes sense. Right. I agree. I agree. Um, I definitely agree on that. Um, and, and a fun fact for me is that I've never been fishing. Never been fishing? Oh, wow. Never. Never been fishing. In, in my, whole, my whole life, I never went fishing. I never seen snow, coach. Oh, I definitely seen snow. Yeah. So, so, so now, right? So you never seen snow. So, is that something that will affect where you decide to go, or it's just like, 
I don't. It don't matter if it snows. If I if I walk into the building, even if it's pouring down snow, and I feel that it's the right fit, I'm still gonna go there. I mean, I. I haven't really had a problem with like changing my climate. Like we went to Cali and we went yeah. to Los Angeles and it was somewhat cold during the national championship game. But mm -hmm. I think in general, I want to experience the, the college experience and I want to be able to leave Miami. I've, I was born and raised, but at the same time, if, if Miami or Florida or FSU do a good job of recruiting me, I'm going to make sure that I give them a chance, but I'm most definitely open-minded and that's not something that would, hinder my decision on where I'm gonna go to college. No, I definitely, definitely. Um and, and that and you definitely doing a good job, man, uh with with the schools down here because I know I know you're definitely giving everybody the the same amount of respect and uh hearing everybody out and uh listening what they have to have to say, which is smart, man, which is definitely smart because you never know where you might go. You know? Yeah. You know, you, you might end up up north somewhere or you might end up right here at home. So, you know, you're doing a you're doing a good job with um with listening to everyone out, uh listening to everyone and, and kind of hearing them out and seeing where they're coming from. Right. So my next question, right? So so no one know that knows this better than you. So if you had to say what's one thing that you feel that you need to work on to take your game to the highest level um, in high school? Like what, what is your, what is either your weakness or something that you feel that you really have to work on? I think, like you said, uh, I mean, there's always room for improvement and stuff like that. So no matter how highly ranked I am, I always feel like I can get better and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I think as right now, my footwork has gotten tremendously better and my hand placement has gotten a lot better. But one thing I'm trying to do um, every day in practice and I'm still working on is getting better slowly is stepping on the linebacker's toe, toes and going to second level and not just hitting them, but getting mm -hmm. position and driving them down 10 yards. Right. Yep. Yep. And and that's that's definitely the right verbiage, you know, going to step on his toes, you know. Um, and for those that don't understand what that means, it's literally, you know, you're going to find that linebacker toes and step on it. Why right. am I saying go step on his toes is because what it's going to do is put you in position to front him up, which is get head up on him. So that's definitely good verbiage. Um, now, for those that don't that don't know, Julian, uh, freshman year, sophomore year, you was weighing about how much? How, how much were you weighing about that? My freshman year, uh, I started at like 285, and then I got up to like 290, 295. Sophomore year, I went from 290, and I finished my sophomore year at um, at 330. Right. So the reason why I'm bringing that up, so right now as a junior, what, what, um, how much are you weighing right now? Right now, I'm, I'm 290 on dock. I'm 6'7, 290. Okay, so 6'7, 290. So, if you haven't seen Julian lately, he has shredded up. He has lost a lot of the baby fat. Um, he definitely do does not look like how he did when he was a freshman, when he was a sophomore. And, that that's a compliment to you and all the hard work that you put in to, uh, to do that. So, what kind of give all the listeners um, an idea of what you kind of went through to lose that weight and 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 to kind of tone up? I think the main thing, like if I can tell them my story at least, is just dedication and and not cheating yourself. Like I was going every day from. I was at St. Thomas eating brownies and Oreos and stuff like mm -hmm. that every day. And I realized in the NFL draft, like all these all these tackles and stuff, they're not these big 330 pounders anymore. All of them are starting to lean up and be mm -hmm. be more lean. And that that's the new demand. So I knew I had to put myself in a, um, a position that I can can get like that. Cause I know in college right. I'm gonna put on weight. But I mean I was waking up every day at six o'clock in the morning. I was working out on an empty stomach and then having a little protein packet. It's 90 calories you put in your, your water bottle. And I was having that until like 1 o'clock. Then at 1 o'clock, I have chicken with beans and, and avocado slices. And I was just changing up with healthy foods. And I did that for about 
two and a half months, three months. And it was just, I was working out three times a day and stuff like that. Just not eating anything bad at all. I mean, that, and that's huge, man, for, for 15, 16, 17 year old in high school, for you to, to, to have that type of discipline. Because you have, to be honest, man, you have grown men that don't have that type of discipline. Right. You know, so for you to have that type of discipline to kind of, you know, change your whole regimen and change the way you did things, you know, that's that's huge. Uh, that's big. That's a compliment to you. That's a hats off to you. Exactly. Um, and I know I know uh, your uncle was, was one who was, you know, helping you with that. Um, and that's hats off to him. And... Um, you know, that's big, man. Like, you know, he had you waking up at 6 in the morning every single day. Yeah, and it was – I had school throughout the whole day too. So I was waking up, doing online school, and that's when I was still at St. Thomas. I was waking up every day at 6 o'clock in the morning, no breakfast. And at first it was hard because I, I went from eating, like, two egg muffins every day, literally, before practice and, and stuff like that. My dad would take right. me to St. Thomas. I would have two egg muffins and McDonald's. Mm -hmm. I went from doing that on a daily basis – to waking up every day for about two to three months, six o'clock in the morning, and just to grind it. Man, that's huge. That's huge. So, are you still on that on that regimen now? So, are you still taking care of, you know, uh, your body and watching what you eat now? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've made sure, like, I don't want to get back in that position where I'm three thirty and I have to, because I'm not gonna lie, coach. It felt like I was going through hell. Like I was three thirty. And it was just losing all that weight. It was not easy. And I know that, I mean, I feel better. I look better. And I'm playing better, Coach. So I know that yeah. there's no reason to put myself in a predicament to go back to that. So I've just been drinking a lot of water, making sure I'm eating healthy foods, chicken, rice, beans, steak, just plain foods and not eating junk food. Man, that's huge, man. Julian, once again, man, I appreciate you hopping on with us, man. And uh, despite all the technical difficulties, man, we had a great show. Uh, you gave insight to all the listeners. And uh, for those that, that's catching the end of it, man, we talked about recruiting. We talked about what make what makes him the number one offensive tackle in his class. Um, discipline, you know, the whole nine. So make sure you guys go back and watch, uh, watch this episode. Once again, I appreciate you, Julian, man, and we'll be in touch real soon. Thank you guys for listening. This is the Craft Alignment Show. Um, tune in next Wednesday. We are on every single Wednesday at 8 p.m. Appreciate you.